Hey everybody, thanks for joining us. I'm Sean Spicer from Agile IT, and today I'm going to be talking about the differences between Microsoft 365 Commercial, the Government Community Cloud, GCC, and GCC High. I'll explain how they're architected with Azure Government to provide either data residency or data sovereignty, and the considerations you'll need to take into account if you want to meet ITAR, DFARS, NIST 800-171, or the upcoming CMMC in your cloud environments. Before we begin, I'd like to give a shout out to our friend Richard Wakeman over at Microsoft, whose articles on the Microsoft Public Sector blog have been instrumental in informing both ourselves and our clients and this presentation. So let's get started. The first thing I want to talk about is the difference between data residency and data sovereignty. These are frequently used interchangeably, but they're very different. Data residency is simply where data lives. Data sovereignty dictates the regional laws and governance structures that must be applied to data. Now, data sovereignty is a relatively new idea that was given international attention in the wake of 2013's global surveillance disclosures by NSA contractor Edward Snowden. Now, Snowden exposed the NSA's PRISM program, which was designed to receive emails, video clips, social media details, logins, and tons of other data on global citizens that was held by US firms, including Facebook, Apple, Google, and Twitter. Following these disclosures, countries around the world started to worry about who could access their national data and the potential fallout that might create. These concerns were compounded by the U.S. Patriot Act, which gave U.S. officials access to any information that was physically within the U.S., regardless of where that information came from. Also in 2013, the DOG DOJ demanded that Microsoft grant access to email information hosted in Ireland for a Hotmail user involved in a narcotics investigation. Microsoft refused, stating that the information hosted on Irish servers was not subject to U.S. jurisdiction. Microsoft appealed this to the Second Circuit Court, who froze the warrant until a decision could be handed down. While the case was awaiting judgment, U.S. Congress passed the Clarifying Lawful Overseas Use of Data Act, more easily called the Cloud Act. This clarified laws around data stored by U.S. companies outside of the United States and provided a streamlined way to grant mutual legal assistance treaties to permit the multinational sharing of data for law enforcement. One of the most well-known data sovereignty laws right now is the EU's GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulation, which requires data and information about EU citizens be both stored and processed within the EU with very strict laws regarding its handling and disclosure. Data sovereignty is not a global constant. Different countries, including France, Vietnam, China, Russia, and Australia, have their own requirements for data sovereignty. For defense clients in the US, data sovereignty is required by ITAR in some very specific ways. And I'll discuss this a bit more in a few minutes as I discuss the architecture of Microsoft 365 across commercial, GCC, GCC High, and the DoD Cloud. The next thing I want to talk about is the difference between a high side environment and GCC high. This doesn't come up too often, but it can be a point of confusion. When handling classified in data, environments are built with a high side and a low side. The low side is for your general non-classified information, day-to-day -day emails, things like that. And the high side is secured for handling classified data and is protected by countermeasures like air gapping, where the classified system, the high side, has no connection to insecure networks or machines. GCC high is not a high side environment. GCC high got the name GCC high because it meets FedRAMP high impact requirements. Um, doubt this is going to concern many of you, but if you are coming in thinking that GCC high is a cloud-based high side environment, that is not the case. So let's get into it. What is GCC High? So in order to make this more easy to understand, I'm gonna go chronologically, and to spare creating any excess confusion, I'll mostly be using modern names for these products. So in the beginning, there was Office 365, and Office 365 grew from a number of other products, but for our purposes today, I want to talk about three specific principles at play. Office 365 is built on globally replicated directory services with a global network and with global support personnel. Within commercial, Microsoft has also introduced a multi-geo service, which addresses many data residency requirements. 
With this service, you can address data residency needs where a user's information must be stored at rest in a specific data center. This is great for meeting compliance frameworks like GDPR and HIPAA for multinational organizations, but for our DOD contractors who are subject to ITAR, it lacks the export controls to ensure that information doesn't leave the US. This goes back to that data residency versus data sovereignty. You can achieve data residency with Microsoft 365 Multi-Geo and even some sovereignty requirements like GDPR, but you can't meet the data sovereignty requirements of DFARS and ITAR. But just meeting data residency is not enough. For many government standards, you must also make sure that anyone working in the environment meets specific background checks. So there is GCC, the Government Community Cloud. Now don't confuse GCC with GCC High. GCC High is a data enclave of commercial, and while it does provide data residency controls, it has the same global directory and network as commercial, and therefore cannot provide the data sovereignty required by ITAR. Then came Azure. The one key thing to note about Azure Commercial as it relates to Office 365 is that both Office 365 Commercial and Office 365 GCC are paired with Azure AD in Commercial. Office 365 GCC cannot be paired with Azure AD in government, and compliance for Azure Commercial aligns with Office 365 Commercial. Those same three principles that I mentioned earlier apply. Global directory, global network, and global support personnel. Again, data residency is available, but data sovereignty is not. In fact, many state, local, and federal civilian agencies will not deploy IaaS or PaaS workloads into Azure Commercial without US person support, regardless of the fact that there is a provisional authority to operate, a PATO, for FedRAMP High in Azure Commercial. Azure let Microsoft start to move Dynamics into the cloud to become Dynamics 365, and I'll talk about that once we get over to the government side. Now, to meet US government needs for IAS and PAS, Microsoft created Azure Government. Azure Gov is isolated, both physically and virtually. It's a separated instance of Azure that exists in com a compliance boundary dedicated to US government workloads. It's built exclusively for US government entities and their contractors. Azure Gov is designed for highly sensitive data, such as controlled unclassified information, CUI, that requires true data sovereignty. This allows Microsoft to meet the compliance accreditation for FedRAMP High and requirements for US defense regulations like DFARS, ITAR, and CMMC. Now, there are four things to remember about Azure government. First, it has US sovereign directory services. Unlike with commercial, Azure AD and Azure Gov is not global. No matter where your client connects from, you will always get authentication and authorization rendered from Azure Gov data centers located in CONUS in the continental United States. This is why you'll always see a login page with a .us URL, or in some cases .mil. Second, it's a US sovereign network. Data transmission and data processing occurs in the continental United States only. As opposed to commercial endpoints that are all .com, Azure Gov endpoints are all, like I mentioned, .us or .mil. For example, if you sign into Azure Gov from Australia, it will always resolve your client to Azure Gov data centers in the US. There's no probability of you connecting to data centers in Australia. If your internet peering is in the US, you can rest assured that no data transmission will occur outside of the continental United States. S third, screened US persons. Support personnel is restricted to screened US persons. This includes background checks as required by multiple regulations, including checks against export related lists um, maintained by the Departments of Commerce, State, and Treasury, um, and coverage is offered on all services in Azure Gov isolated within the compliance boundary where only screened US persons are permitted, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. Finally, Azure government supports US export controlled data. As I already mentioned, True data sovereignty allows Microsoft to contractually commit to export controls, including US defense regulations for DFARS, ITAR, and CMMC. This includes CUI and <coughs> pardon me, CDI, covered defense information. <clears throat> Next came Office 365 DOD. Given authorization for Impact Level 5 in Azure Gov, Microsoft began to build Office 365 for the DOD. In order to do so, they needed to assure Impact Level 5 across the entire platform which caused a minor problem. Only the DOD is allowed into a level five environment. 
This meant that DOD contractors, as well as cabinet level agencies that required data sovereignty, such as the FBI, the Department of Homeland Security, etc., were all excluded from using the platform. So GCC High was born. Just as GCC was a copy of commercial, GCC High is a copy of DOD. Again, in alignment with Azure Gov, both GCC High and DOD feature U.S. sovereign directory services as US sovereign, a U.S. sovereign network with Office 365 DOD and GCC High endpoints all being .us or .mil. This is the most important part of GCC High for compliance with export controls. As an example, for email to be client compliant, you must have all data processing in a U.S. sovereign solution. Microsoft offers Exchange Online protection and Office Advanced Threat protection within the compliance boundary, keeping all data processing of email within the continental United States. This includes logging and telemetry captured in the process of scanning email, which is also a requirement of NIST 800-171 and CMMC. GCC High and DOD also restrict support personnel to screened U.S. persons, and they are the only environments where Microsoft will commit to export controls, handling controlled and classified information, and covered defense information. Then came Dynamics 365 government. Slowly, Microsoft is bringing the entire power platform and Dynamics under the umbrella of Microsoft Business Applications, and this is no different in GCC High or Power Apps and Power Automate are being rolled out now. So this is not specific to Dynamics, but I think it's a good time to mention the issue of feature parity. Um, so because things in commercial are made by Microsoft, they meet their own, they meet some accreditation, but they're not as strict, of course, as the DOD. There's a time gap between the time when features are available in Office 365 Commercial and GCC and the time that they become available in GCC High. So a lot of times we see a 10 to 13 month gap between the time something is released in Commercial and the time it becomes available in GCC High. Um, finally, I wanna talk about impact levels briefly. Um, DASA SRG stands for Defense Information Systems Agency, and SRG refers to the DoD Cloud Computing Security Requirements Guide, which lays out baseline requirements for cloud service providers that host DoD information systems. Level 4 covers CUI and CDI, and level 5 is for agency-owned information that might need a higher level of protection as well as unclassified national security systems. Level two is for local governments handling non-controlled, unclassified information. Now, let's look at the compliance levels across the clouds. For the sake of brevity, I'm ignoring the civilian compliance controls like PCI, HIPAA, FINRA, so-and-so. First, let's take a look at commercial. As you can see, it doesn't meet any of the frameworks we've discussed right now. I do wanna take a moment to mention FedRAMP moderate impact in commercial. Office 365 commercial meets all the FedRAMP requirements for NIST 800-53, but it also has an accreditation from the Department of Health and Human Services to meet FedRAMP moderate. Um, yes, there are a ton of agencies that can accredit. Now, let's look at GCC. Keeping in mind what we discussed earlier about sovereign environments, you'll see that GCC is the first level with an SRG rating. You'll also see that it meets DFARS. Now, this is a tricky point. Microsoft itself meets DFARS in GCC as it's required to do, uh, to do work with state and local governments, but does not allow customers to claim DFARS compliance in the cloud. Um, this is called flowdowns and GCC does not allow contractual flowdowns for DFARS. This is really important to note. I also want to call out NIST 800-171 here. The official Microsoft documentation recognizes that NIST 800-171 can be met in GCC High. However, it requires tons of third-party services and software to meet logging requirements, and Microsoft will not attest to compliance in that environment, meaning you're on your own as far as any shared responsibility. In short, it's a terrible idea to attempt it, and neither Microsoft nor Agile IT are gonna help you out there if you decide to try. Next comes GCC High. Here you can see that we're meeting DFARS, ITAR, and NIST 800-171 but this is where that divide we discussed earlier comes in. Now we're operating entirely in the continental US and all personnel are cleared, and we'll discuss that in a second. Now, I bring DOD in 
Um, really don't worry about DOD. If you're going to get into DOD, you are DOD. Um, contractors aren't going to get in there. Um, third parties aren't going to get in there. You're not going to get approved for DOD. And if you are approved for DOD, you're DOD, and you're probably not watching this video because you already know all about it. Um, the one thing I do want to call out, though, is it does have this DOD SRG level 5. And the rest of it is almost identical to GCC high. So both GCC and DOD screen their employees across a number of checks, including standard background checks, foreign asset controls, fingerprinting against the FBI database. However, in order to support GCC high or DOD, Microsoft personnel must also complete a tier three investigation from the Office of Personal Management. Um, this is the same background check that is done for confidential and secret access um, on the government level. So I hope that this has provided a little bit of insight. I get these questions every day about what is GCC, what is GCC high, which cloud do I need? And I put this together hoping um, that it could be a valuable resource moving forward for those of you that are looking to meet compliance in the cloud. I want to call out our GCC High ebook, which goes into much greater depth into all of these topics. You can download that at agileit.co slash gccbook. Got the URL up there on the screen. I will also have a link down in the description for those of you watching this on YouTube and a link in the blog that's highlighting this as well at agileit.com. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this. I hope it's been informative. Give us a like and follow and have a great day.